What I would say about this Go Show is that, again, you can read from the title how those initially mm. aspiring to the way can attain Buddhahood through the Lotus Sutra. Mm -mm -mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So when we say through the Lotus Sutra, what are we talking about in the latter day of law? Through chanting Nam Yoho Renge Kyo. Okay? So the key okay. is that for anybody that's going to be watching this on a video and you're new, because again, the people around this table are not new, but for people that have begun practicing in, say, the last two or three or four years, five years even, uh, I would consider you still kind of new in the process of, of going through the six stages. So the key is that if you will listen to what this Go Show says and have complete faith in what it says and uh, aspire in the same manner that it inspires you to, to behave, you will uh, absolutely see a result there will be uh, definite power instilled in your life. This is how you get benefits, this kind of faith. All right, so I'm going to start by going to the um, page uh, 888. How lucky. 888 is where we will start by reading the background. All right? Volume 1. Volume 1. Volume 1, 888 is where we will start. That's the end of the Go Show. And actually, the lecture will be on the very end of the Go Show, okay? The part that President Kate is going to discuss and lecture on of this Go Show. So this is, we're not going to get to this. This is an 18-page, 19-page Go Show. So it's going to take me a couple of weeks to read it. And what I'm saying is that when we get to the lecture from President Kate, he's really only going to talk about the very end of this Go Show, okay? But it's a significant Go Show. I'm excited to be able to read it. I don't care if it's long. It's really, really uh, mm -hmm. capable as far as its answers and so forth. It's a question and answer format, so it makes it perfect for somebody that's wondering about specific things. And my, our friend Ty had mentioned in what he wrote, George, uh, on, the, on the YouTube thing about rely on the law and not upon persons. And this Go Show is going to explain what does that really mean, okay? Uh, I, I mentioned something about it a few weeks ago. Let me start by reading the background starting on page 888. Okay, here we go. Uh, those, uh, how those initially aspiring to uh, the way can attain Buddhahood through uh, can attain Buddhahood through the Lotus Sutra. Background: This letter is generally thought to have been written in the third year of the Kinji of, of, of Kinji, though differing opinions assign it to as early as uh, 1271 or even as late as 1282. Yeah, yeah there's not enough light on. Thank yeah. you. Its recipient was a woman called the Lei Nun Myoho, who lived at Okamiya in Suruga province. Little is known about her other than that she was a widow in uh, 1278 and also lost an elder brother. She appears to have maintained steadfast faith throughout her life. She is the same Lei Nun who received uh, uh, the one essential phrase from Nichiren Daisha and another Gosha. So she received at least two. Those initially aspiring to the way in the, the letter's title refer to the people of this latter age who were generally considered to have planted few roots of merit in prior lifetimes. Written in question and answer form, it first establishes that among the various schools of Buddhism, only that based upon the Lotus Sutra represents a school founded by Shakyamuni Buddha himself, for the Sutra alone expresses the Buddhist true intention. Does everybody understand what they mean by that? But, uh, Again, this, all these, okay, there's like, say, for instance, there's a flower garland sutra, right? Yeah. But the flower garland sutra is not the flower garland school. The flower garland school was started by someone who had an opinion about the flower garland sutra and preached that, okay? That's what he's trying to say here, so, is that all these schools, if you say Zen, if you say... Interpretation? They're not, only inter not only their interpretations, but their misinterpretations of the entirety of the teaching of the Buddha. That's what he's going to qualify here. Okay, So uh, he's saying that, again, all the other schools, other than one specific school, deviate from the Buddha's true intent. Okay, So don't follow those teachers of those schools. Listen to the sutra that those schools are based on and listen to his interpretation of what that teaching is and where that sutra actually ends up in the qualification of the five periods and the whatever that, that Tintai did, right? Mm -hmm. So he's saying, 
the, through the first few sets of questions and answers, the Daishonin explains that whether viewed in terms of the teaching, the people's capacity, the time, or the country, the lotus is the only sutra to be propagated in Japan during the latter day of the law. Unlike the provisional teachings, which are suited to some people but not to others, the Lotus Sutra is unique in enabling all people to attain Buddhahood. In Nichiren Daishonin's time, the idea prevailed that the Lotus Sutra, being extremely profound, was far beyond the capacity of people born in the latter day of the law, and that only the relatively easy Nimbutsu teachings could save them by leading to them rebirth to rebirth in Amida's pure land. But again, those were the Nimbutsu school teachers that made that declaration. Do you understand, do understand that? That's not in the sutra, right? The Daishon encounters by asserting that in this age, the seven characters of Namyoho Rengekyo, which represent the heart and core of the Lotus Sutra, can benefit all people. This is the law to be propagated by Bodhisattva superior practices. Referring to the many disasters then besetting Japan, Nietzsche and Daishonin points out that prayers for the nation's welfare based on the provisional teachings no longer produce results. To make fire, he says, three things are needed, a good piece of steel, a good flint, and, and good tender. Similarly, one needs three elements, a good teacher, a good believer, and a good teaching before prayers can be answered and the nation restored to peace. The Lotus Sutra, being foremost among the Buddhist teachings, is just such a good teaching that can answer prayers and end disasters. A theme running through this uh, writing is the Lotus Sutra's universal power of salvation. The Daishonin says that regardless of whether people do or do not possess uh, the power of understanding, the most important thing is to let them form a bond with the mystic law. That's form a bond with the Gohonzon mm -hmm. through their Daimoku, through their daily life. Again, mm -hmm. not trying to master all these very profound things, actually. Mm. Okay? First, understanding so that you can have faith. Because you're going to have to have faith to have that understanding. That's the point. Mm. Though, thus, he emphasizes that in the evil age of the latter day, one should assertively teach Nam Yoho Rengeko, the heart of the Lotus Sutra, rather than some lesser provisional teaching. For even those uh, who slander the Lotus Sutra will eventually attain Buddhism by virtue of the poison drum relationship or the reverse connection that they by form with it. Everybody understands? Mm. Do you understand? You don't, you don't say to them what they'll be comfortable hearing or what they will not immediately reject. You try and use as much tact as you can, but you say it straightforward because even if they reject it, they've already now formed a connection with it. They will attain Buddhahood based on your shakabuku. That's what shakabuku is, to refute error and just to, to establish correctness, right? Mm -hmm. So, or reverse connection that they, they thereby form with it. He also makes clear for the lay nun Myoho's benefit that the Lotus Sutra, unlike earlier teachings, guarantees Buddhahood for women as well as for men. The conclusion explains that the law of nam Yoho Rengekyo, the five characters of the sutra's title, is identical to the Buddha nature inherent in our own lives and in all things in the universe. When we revere this law, the essence of our own life, and chant, okay, when we revere this law, mm -hmm. which is the essence of our own life, yeah. and chant Nam Yoho Renge Kyo, mm -hmm. we simultaneously manifest the Buddha nature in, both in ourselves and in the world around us, okay? Mm -hmm. So going back to wherever this starts, let me go back, I already lost my spot, okay. Page 872. How those initially aspiring the way can attain Buddhahood through the Lotus Sutra. <clears throat> and I went back through and uh, clearly marked question and answer, question and answer, in addition to my normal underlined stuff that I've had from before. So that I'm going to try and do this on the basis of covering a question and an answer and make sure it's clear before I go into the next question. Okay, so I'm just going to break this down and go question by question by question, answer by answer by answer. Question, first question. Of the eight schools, the nine schools, or the ten schools, which is the true school founded by Shakyamuni Buddha? Mm -hmm. Okay? What school is founded by Shakyamuni Buddha? Answer. The Lotus School is the school founded by Shakyamuni. We know this 
because of the statement that of all the sutras I, Shakyamuni, have preached, now preach, and will preach, the Lotus Sutra is foremost. These words were spoken by Shakyamuni Buddha himself. Therefore, the school based on the Lotus Sutra is known as the Buddha-founded school and is also called the Lotus School. It is also known as the Tendai School. So what did he just qualify there? That the lineage of the Tendai School, okay? Mm. And we all know that that leads on to uh, uh, Nagar, uh, pardon me, uh, to uh, Myolo and to Dingyo, right? He mm. would consider Dingyo still part of that Tendai School, mm. all right? That Basically, he's saying these are correct teachers. That's really what he's qualifying in this, in this first part. What is the teaching of the correct teacher? All right. For this reason, he continues, the great teacher Dingyo, in his commentary, the Lotus uh, states in his commentary, the Lotus School, which Tentai elucidated, represents a school founded by Shakyamuni, the world-honored one. In none of the sutras other than the Lotus does one find a passage concerning the relative superiority of all the sutras that I have preached, now preach, and will preach? Here the sutras that the Buddha has preached refer to the various sutras expounded by the Buddha in the more than 40 years before he preached the Lotus Sutra. Those he now preaches refer to the Immeasurable Meaning Sutra, which we know is part of it's the threefold Lotus Sutra, right? That's the intro. Straight up, that's the intro to the Lotus Sutra. You almost can't separate the two, all right? Those he will preach refer to the Nirvana Sutra, okay? The Buddha thus firmly decreed that, transcending these three categories of sutras, the Lotus Sutra alone constitutes the school that assures the attainment of Buddhahood that assures the attainment of Buddhahood, which is the point. The various other schools were founded by bodhisattvas or teachers in the period after the Buddha had entered nirvana. Everybody's with me with what he's saying and how he's qualifying. Why he's saying it's the Tendai school. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Anybody got a question about where we are so far? Mm -hmm. Everybody's with me, right? Okay. The various other schools were founded by bodhisattvas or teachers in the period after the Buddha had entered nirvana. Should we now turn our backs upon the Buddha's decree and follow the schools established by the bodhisattvas and teachers? Or should we ignore the words of the bodhisattvas and teachers and follow the school established by the Buddha? Because he's trying to make this point in order to qualify that the Lotus Sutra is the supreme teaching left by Shakyamuni that leads to the supreme teaching mm -hmm. for the latter day of the law. Mm -hmm. Or should we entrust ourselves to either course as the feeling strikes us and uphold whatever sutra or doctrine suits our inclination? He's saying, hey, what, what should we do here? The Buddha knew long ago that we would have doubts of this kind. And therefore, he clearly designated the sutra to be embraced by those who are truly aspiring to the way in this defiled and evil age of the latter day of the law. A sutra says, rely on the law and not upon persons. And a lot of people have grabbed this. And again, that's why they want to just talk about chanting, but they don't want to talk about any leaders that teach chanting. All right. A sutra says, rely on the law and not upon persons. Rely on the meaning, but, but continues. It's not just that one sentence. Rely on the law and not upon persons. Rely on the meaning of the teaching and not on the words. Rely on wisdom and not on discriminative thinking. Discriminative thinking. Discriminating. Okay? Tossing things aside. Making discrimination against them. Rely on sutras that are complete and final and not on those that are not complete and final. Mm. The meaning of this passage, so I don't have to interpret it, I can just read what Nietzsche says it means. It's not my opinion. The meaning of this passage is that one should not rely upon the words of the bodhisattvas and teachers, but should heed what was established by the Buddha. Okay, the Buddha and the law are one, right? Mm -hmm. It further means that one should not rely on the teachings of the true word Zen and Nimbutsu schools, which are based upon the sutras of the flower garland, a game of correct and equal and wisdom periods, but should 
uphold the sutras that are complete and final. And, be, by, and by relying upon sutras that are complete and final, it means upholding the Lotus Sutra. Okay? Does everybody understand the answer to the question? The question was, of the eight schools, nine schools, ten schools, which is the true school founded by Shakyamuni Buddha? As far as, because there were no schools when Shakyamuni Buddha preached the sutras. You do understand that, right? Mm -hmm. It hadn't been divided up into anything yet. And that's what we're talking about here. That's what he's qualifying. Don't listen to the interpretations of people that came after Shakyamuni. Listen to what Shakyamuni said during his lifetime, specifically what he said at the end of the li his lifetime, where he said, now foremost among those I have preached, will preach, or, or, or am preaching or will preach. Everybody understands? Mm -hmm. So do you understand why Nietzsche has now qualified the answer to this as being the Tendai school? Because the Tendai school is a school that's based on the Lotus Sutra. Right. All right? Question, second question. Observing Japan at the present time, we see that the obstacles presented by the five impurities are very grave, that quarrels and disputes occur incessantly, uh, occur incessantly and that people's minds are consumed with anger and their thoughts filled with jealousy. In such a country, and at such a time as this, sound familiar? What sutra ought to be propagated? All right, answer. In this is a country in which the Lotus Sutra should be propagated. Therefore, the Lotus Sutra itself says, I will cause it to be widely propagated throughout Jampudvipa, and we'll see that it never comes to an end. That's Shakyamuni saying that. The treatise on the stages of the yoga practice states that there is a small country situated to the northeast where the Mahayana teachings of the Lotus Sutra of the Wonderful Law should be spread. And the Reverend Anan states, this refers to our country of Japan. From the point of view of India, Japan is indeed situated to the northeast. Moreover, the supervisor of priests Eshin states in his Essentials of the One Vehicle Teaching, Throughout Japan, all people share the same capacity to attain Buddhahood through the perfect teaching. Whether at court or in the countryside, whether far or near, all alike turn to the single vehicle, and whether priests or lay believers, whether eminent or humble, all can hope to attain Buddhahood. The meaning of this passage is that the people of Japan, and again, Nichiren is saying, okay, that's what Eshin said, and that's what... Um, he also quoted someone, uh, Reverend Anand. He's saying, the meaning of this is. So don't ask me what the meaning is. Don't make up the meaning yourself. He's going to answer what the meaning of that is. Listen to what Nietzsche says. If you want to have faith in what he says, you'll have the right answer and you'll see actual proof. Mm. The meaning of this passage is that the people of Japan, whether they live in Kyoto, Kamakura, Tsukushi, uh, Chinze, or Michinoku, whether they live nearby or far away, are endowed with the capacity to attain Buddhahood solely through the one vehicle teaching of the Lotus Sutra. And that Japan is therefore a country where high and low, eminent and humble, those who observe the precepts and those who break them, men and women alike, can all attain Buddhahood through the Lotus Sutra. Just as there are no ordinary stones in the Kulun Mountains, and no poisons in the mountain island of Ping Lai, so Japan is purely and wholly a country of the Lotus Sutra. And yet, we find people who, while declaring with their mouths that the Lotus Sutra is inherently a wonderful sutra, and that no one could therefore refuse to take faith in it, nevertheless, they spend night and day, morning and evening, reciting the name of Amida Buddha. They are like people who sing the praises of a particular medicine and yet morning and evening dose themselves on poison. And everybody knows when he's saying Amida, right? He's talking about Nimbutsu. Mm -hmm. Or there are those who declare that the Nimbutsu and the Lotus Sutra are essentially one. They are like persons who claim that ordinary stones are the same as gems. Senior monks, identical to junior monks. And poison, equivalent to medicine. In addition, there are many who hate envy, resent, slander, despise, and look down on the Lotus Sutra. The Sutra says, it will face much hostility in the world and be difficult to believe. It also says, since hatred and jealousy toward the Sutra abound, even when the thus come one is in the world, 
How much more will this be so after his passing? These predictions of the sutra have come about without the slightest deviation. That's what we're experiencing now, he's saying then, right? Therefore, the great teacher Dingyo writes in his commentary, speaking of the age, the propagation of the true teaching will begin in the age when the middle day of the law ends and the latter day opens, which is the time that Nichiren's occupying with his own life. Regarding the land, it will begin in a land to the east of Tang and to the west of Katsu. Uh, As for the people, it will spread among people stained by the five impurities who live in a time of conflict. Japan. The Sutra says, since hatred and jealousy toward the Sutra abound even when the thus come one is in the world, how much more so will this be after his passing? There is a good reason for this statement. And that's what Dengyo said, not Nichiren. From these passages of the Sutra and commentaries, Dingyo's was a commentary, mm -hmm. one should know the following. In Japan, in one mountain monastery after another, in temple after temple, at court and in the countryside, in both near and distant regions, through scriptural teachings other through those scriptural teachings other than the Lotus Sutra, such as those of the true word Zen, precepts and Nimbutsu schools, are being propagated. These are not teachings that suit the country or that conform to the Buddhist true intention, nor can they free us from the sufferings of birth and death. So then why do them? Okay, does everybody understand that question and answer? The question was observing Japan, what's the correct teaching to be propagated here? And it was clearly the Lotus Sutra again, right? He's still talking the Lotus Sutra though, right? All right. Question, page 874, first column. The Flower Garland School propounds the doctrine of the five teachings and declares all other sutras to be inferior, inferior and the Flower Garland Sutra superior. The True Word School puts forth the doctrine of the ten stages of the mind, declaring that all the other sutras being exoteric teachings are inferior while the true word school, because it represents the esoteric teachings, is superior. The Zen school rejects all the sutras as being and to, uh, uh, belonging to the realm of written teachings and asserts a separate transmission outside the sutras, independent of words or writings. Because enlightenment, they say, is gained merely by sitting and facing the wall, the Zen school alone is superior. The Pure Land School sets forth two kinds of practices, correct and sundry. The Lotus Sutra and the various other sutras are rejected as belonging to the category of sundry practices, and hence one is urged to discard, close, ignore, and abandon them, inclusive of the Lotus Sutra. The three Pure Land Sutras, which would, would be the, what? The three Pure Land Sutras would, what would they have to do with? Nembutsu, the three Pure Land Sutras, it's Amida again, Pure Land, Amida. The three Pure Land Sutras, on the other hand, they claim, are adapted to the people's capacity. That's guys, we're, we're still talking about this, right? Uh, and are wonderful sutras belonging to the realm of correct practices. Thus, each school in its conceit maintains its own biased attachment. But which one represents the true intention of Shakyamuni Buddha? Okay? So, and again, as we go through this, some of the questions he asks are so complete, and he puts in all the things that anybody could think to ask to try and refute him, mm -hmm. that when you read the question, by the time you're done with the question, you're, was that a question or was that an answer? I'm not sure. So, realize, what was the question? Here. Which one represents the true intention of Shakyamuni Buddha? Talking about all the different schools here, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, he now answered. Each school declares its own sutra to be superior. And Mr. Lee, this is the whole thing too for you, to understand Nichiren Buddhism versus other sects of Buddhism. Mm -hmm. Each school declares its own sutra to be superior, all other sutras being dismissed as inferior, and on this basis labels itself the correct school but their arguments are based merely upon the words of the teachers and not upon the Buddha's teaching. Only the Lotus Sutra was proclaimed superior by the Buddha himself when he expounded the simile of the five flavors 
likening them to the teaching of the five periods. He also declared that of all the various sutras that he has preached, now preaches and will preach, in terms of the path of attaining Buddhahood, none could rival the Lotus Sutra. These statements are in truth the Buddha's own golden words. They're in the sutras. Therefore, when people declare that their own sutra surpasses the Lotus Sutra, or that their own school is superior to the Lotus School, they are like persons of inferior rank calling someone of high rank a commoner, because they are disputing what the Buddha himself said. Or retainers whose families have for generations been in the service of a certain Lord, turning against him and declaring him to be their servant. How can they escape grave retribution? Nichiren is questioning. They're going completely against Shakyamuni's own words and then inserting their own very, very, very bad thing to do. On the other hand, the assertion of that the various other sutras rank below the Lotus Sutra is not based upon the words of the teachers, but is plainly stated in the text of the sutra itself. The Lotus Sutra is what declares all the other sutras inferior to it. No other sutra does that, by the way, in the manner that it does before now preach, will will pre pardon me, have preached, now preach, or will preach. No other sutra talks in that regard. Okay? Only the lotus, which came at the end of his life. Okay? And the nirvana took one evening. Didn't take eight years. Alright? So, okay. On the other hand, the assertion that the various other sutras rank below the Lotus Sutra is not based upon the words of the teachers, but is plainly stated in the text of the sutra itself. In this respect, it is like a ruler asserting that he is superior to his subjects. Or a samurai calling a commoner a person of low rank. <laughs> These are the, sorry, that's the way it is. What penalty could this possibly bring? Okay? This, this sutra, the lotus, represents the true intention of the Buddha and the prime concern of Tentai and Myolo. Okay? So, if you're a disciple of Nichiren, he's already qualified his opinion and his teaching for you to understand. You can question it if you like, but the answer as it relates to Nietzsche's position is already clearly written. So if you want to go against what Nietzsche is saying and add something to it, it's no different than what he's just called out the other schools for having done. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So be very careful about that. Question. The teachings of the Buddha's lifetime were all intended to benefit the people. And because people differ from one another in their, uh, uh, pardon me, in their innate nature, he expounded the various teachings. Nevertheless, his basic intention in all cases was simply to enable everyone to attain the Buddha way. Therefore, people reason that the sutra that is pertinent to oneself may be quite irre irrelevant to others, while the sutra that is pertinent to them will be irrelevant to oneself. Thus, for example, for persons who can attain the way through the Nimbutsu teachings of the sutras other than the Lotus Sutra, the meditation and related sutras will be of, of greatest benefit, while the Lotus Sutra will be of no help. Conversely, for those who can reach Buddhahood and achieve the way through the Lotus Sutra, the other sutras will be irrelevant, while the Lotus Sutra will be of great ben greatest benefit. When the Buddha said, in these more than 40 years I have not yet revealed the truth, when he said, Though they, the Buddhists, point out various different paths, in truth they do so for the sake of the Buddha vehicle, or when he said, honestly discarding expedient means, I will preach only the unsurpassed way, he was addressing persons with the capacity to attain the way through the Lotus Sutra. Everyone in the world agrees that this argument is reasonable. How should we understand it? If this view is correct, then there is really no difference between the Mahayana and the Hinayana, and no dissimilarity between the provisional and the true teachings. Thus, I find myself in great doubt as to which sutra the Buddha defined as representing his true intention, and which, in fact, he proclaimed to be the teaching for attaining Buddhahood. That was his question, right? He, he laid it all out there in a very kind of like, in his face way, he's saying, what else could you say to me in a question if you were going to ask me a question? I'm putting out all the reasons why you might say it's not the lotus and why you think what you think. Mm -hmm. Now's his answer. That's why this is such a beautiful go show. Answer. From the very beginning, the Buddha's intention in appearing in the world was to preach the wonderful law. 
That's where he was going to go from the moment he started. That's why the Kegon Sutra is the second highest teaching, okay? But in profundity. But because the people differed so greatly in their capacity and were not right to receive it, the Buddha first pondered for a period of three weeks, then spent the following 40 and more years preparing and readying the people, and then finally preached this wonderful law, right? Because the Agamas came right after the Kagon. Okay? I can't think of what the Kagon... The first flower garland. First comes a flower garland, right? Mm -hmm. Flower garland, boom, over everybody's head. And that's when he goes, boom, right into the Agamas, because he can see nobody's going to get this, and they're going to completely understand it, and they're going to twist it all up. So i got to go into do's and don'ts. And the Agamas are 500 uh, rules for women and 250 rules for men and all that other crap, okay? So those are different sutras, and those are Hinayana sutras. All right, not the flower garland, but the Agamas are. Okay, so he says, from the beginning, the very beginning, the Buddha's intention in appearing in the world was to preach the wonderful law. But because the people differed so greatly in their capacity and were not ripe to receive it, the Buddha first pondered for a period of three weeks, then spent the following 40 years and more preparing and readying the people, and then finally preached this wonderful law, the Lotus Sutra. The Buddha said, if I merely praised the Buddha vehicle, then the living beings sunk in their suffering would be incapable of believing in this law. And because they rejected the law and failed to believe in it, they would fall into the three evil paths. He also said the world-honored one has long expounded his doctrines and now must reveal the truth. The meaning of these passages is that the Buddha from the very beginning intended to preach the doctrines of the Buddha via the doctrine of the Buddha vehicle. But he knew that the people having no inclination to hear the Buddha's law, that they're all Buddhas themselves. They want a God to rely on that they can pray to that will save them without them having to do anything. No human revolution salvation. That's a fantasy. The meaning of these passages is that the Buddha from the very beginning intended to preach this doctrine of the doctrine of the Buddha vehicle. But he knew that the people having no inclination to hear the Buddha's law would not put their faith in it, but on the contrary would undoubtedly slander it. Therefore, in order to develop the people's capacities to the same level, he first spent a period of 40 or more years preaching the flower garland, a game of correct and equal and wisdom sutras. And then, at the very last, preached the Lotus Sutra. At that time, Shauri Putra, Madhagalayana, and others of the 12,000 voice hearers, Manjushri, Maitreya, and others of the 80,000 bodhisattvas, the tens, the ten thousands of million, millions of world uh, wheel-turning kings, as well as Brahma, Chakra, and the countless other heavenly beings who had all been present during the Buddha's more than 40 years of preaching, each exclaimed with regard to the teaching that they had heard before, we would never gain the immeasurable insight of the thus come one. But when they heard him preach the Lotus Sutra, they rejoiced, exclaiming, This cluster of unsurpassed jewels has come to us unsought. Unsought. What does that mean? Why did they exclaim? But when they heard the, him preach the Lotus Sutra, they rejoiced, exclaiming, This cluster of unsurpassed jewels has come to us unsought. Therefore, they said, since times past, often we have heard the world-honored ones preaching, but we have never heard this kind of profound, wonderful, and superior law. They also said the Buddha preaches a rare, rarely encountered law, one never heard from past times. So what, is he, what are they saying? This cluster of unsurpassed jewels has come to us unsought. It's the acknowledgement that they didn't even have the wisdom to perceive such a thing and to desire it. They didn't, they didn't have the desire for the Buddha vehicle because they couldn't comprehend the Buddha vehicle as existing. So to be given the blessing of the Buddha vehicle that can take you directly to Buddhahood through its teaching, they didn't come to the teaching for that purpose. Right? That's why they're saying this cluster of unsurpassed jewels has come to us unsought. Okay, next paragraph. The intent of these passages is to praise the Lotus Sutra by saying that though those present at the assembly 
had heard the Buddha preach a considerable number of times during the preceding 40 years and more, they had never heard anything like the law of the Lotus Sutra and that, of the, and that the Buddha had never before preached a doctrine such as this. The doctrines heard by the assembly in the preceding 42 years cannot in any way be compared with those of this sutra they were now hearing. Therefore, it is a grave error to assert that this sutra was preached for the sake of persons who can, can attain the way through the Lotus Sutra, but that it is useless for persons who can gain the way through the sutras preached earlier. In the case of the sutras preached during the previous 42 years, since they were provided as expedient means for individuals, each with a particular capacity or relationship, because what are those what are those teachings for? What period are those teachings Later for? Days, no. No? No. Huh? That's the point. Those the people years. all had a relationship with Shakyamuni. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Nobody in the latter day of the law Assistant has a relationship with Shakyamuni. Yeah. Those teachings were for his individual disciples that had the capacities to actually gain the fruit of Buddhahood through provisional teachings. They were his disciples, okay? So he's saying, again, in the case of the sutras preached during the previous 42 years since they were provided as expedient means, so what, as they were provided as stepping stones mm -hmm. to take them toward the truth that he would ultimately preach at the Lotus, in the Lotus Sutra at the end of his life, right? Mm -hmm. But again, only for the former in the middle day of the law, right? Because what happens after the middle day of the law? The 28th chapter Lotus Sutra loses its power mm -hmm. to redeem. That's why Nam Yoho Rengegyo has to make its advent in the fifth 500 year period as prophesied in the Lotus Sutra. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. And it's a different Buddha now. Mm -hmm. It's not the Buddha Shakyamuni, it's the Buddha Nichiren. Yeah. Do you understand? All right, so again. In the case of the sutras preached during the previous 42 years, since they were provided as expedient means, stepping stones for individuals, each with a particular capacity or relationship, because he preached them to specific people or groups of people, one can perhaps speak of them as being relevant to some persons, but not to others. But in the case of the Lotus Sutra, the different capacities that had enabled individuals to benefit from hearing one another or another of the earlier sutras were all drawn together and ready so that they become identical and pure. The sutra was preached to such people. Therefore, there can be no question of it being relevant to some persons and irrelevant to others because of the basis of the assembly that it was preached to. How lamentable that the distinctions between Mahayana and Hinayana, or provisional and true teachings, should become confused in this manner so that they propose of the Buddha's advent, so that the purpose of the Buddha's advent has been lost, and people go about declaring the Lotus Sutra is useless for persons with the capacity to attain the way through the earlier sutras. One should guard against and fear such errors, because they will lead you astray. They'll lead you to hell. Okay, they'll lead you to slander. In pa past times, there was a man known as the great teacher Tokuitsu, who taught just this sort of doctrine to others and fully believed it in his own mind, reading the Lotus Sutra in the light of such an interpretation. But the great teacher Dingyo attacked him. Does re everybody remember Toki who Tokuitsu was? Tokuitsu was the dude that was also a very famous uh, uh, priest. He's, he's the guy that let himself be used as, he used his body to let Tenthai walk as a step. The, pardon me, to, pardon me I'm, I'm talking about Tokitsu, but wrong guy. In the, in the past times, there was a man known as the great teacher Tokitsu who was taught this just sort of doctrine to others and fully believed it in his own mind, reading the Lotus Sutra in the light of such an interpretation. But the great teacher Dingyo attacked him, saying that though he praises the Lotus Sutra, he, he destroys its heart. After that, the great te to uh, teacher Tokiitsu's tongue split into eight pieces and he died. I had two people mixed up. Excuse me for what I said there. Does everybody understand what he just said in the an uh, answer to that question? What was the question? That was an answer. Excuse me. That was an answer. 
Question. Pardon me. Question. In a commentary by Tentai, it is stated that the Bodhisattvas had already gained entrance to enlightenment through the various sutras. From this, it must follow that the Lotus Sutra was preached merely for the sake of persons of the two vehicles and not for Bodhisattvas, since the Bodhisattvas had already gained enlightenment by the earlier sutras. If so, then one should understand that the words of the Buddha, I have not yet revealed the truth, honestly discarding expedient means, and all the pronouncements found in the eight volumes of Lotus Sutra must have been spoken entirely for persons of the two vehicles and are not relevant to even a single Bodhisattva. Is this correct? All right, this is a, this is a technical question, actually. Answer. The doctrine that the Lotus Sutra was preached solely, and this is the bottom right column of page 876. Answer, the doctrine that the Lotus Sutra was preached solely for persons of the two vehicles and not for bodhisattvas was expounded in China before the time of Tentai by the ten leading scholars representing the three schools of the south and the seven schools of the north. But Tentai refuted this doctrine and put an end to it so that it is no longer propagated today. If you say that there are no bodhisattvas who profit from the Lotus Sutra, then how do you account for the passage that says, when the bodhisattvas hear this law, they will be released from all entanglements of doubt? In view of this, how can you possibly say that bodhisattvas derive no benefit from the Sutra? Or per perhaps you will argue that the Lotus Sutra can benefit the bodhisattvas of dull capacities, of dull faculties, as it does persons of the two vehicles, but that the bodhisattvas of keen faculties have already received sufficient benefit from the earlier sutras. If so, then how do you account for the passage in the sutra that says, those of keen capacity, of dull capacity, I cause the Dharma reign to reign on all equally? Or the passage that says, all bodhisattvas who attain supreme perfect enlightenment in all cases do so through this sutra. The meaning of these passages is that regardless of whether their faculties are keen or dull, whether they abide by the precepts or break them, whether they are of exalted birth or humble, all bodhisattvas, all ordinary people, and all persons of the two vehicles shall become Buddhas and achieve the way through the Lotus Sutra. If you say that those bodhisattvas who have received benefit from the Lotus Sutra are all persons of dull faculties, are you then prepared to say that universal worthy Manjushri, Maitreya, Medicine King, and all the others of the 80,000 bodhisattvas are of dull faculties? And if you maintain that the bodhisattvas of keen faculties had already attained the way through the sutras preached prior to the Lotus Sutra, then just who are these bodhisattvas? I don't know their names. None of the sutras mention them either. Moreover, this enlightenment attained by bodhisattvas through the earlier sutras is at the same as the in, is is it the same as the enlightenment described in the Lotus Sutra? If so, thank you. If so, then it is in fact the enlightenment of the Lotus Sutra and not the result of the earlier sutras. And if it is the enlightenment, uh, if it is an enlightenment other than that of the Lotus Sutra then in which of the sutras that the Buddha has preached, now preaches, and will preach, is it contained? Can't find it. In any event, if it is not the enlightenment of the Lotus Sutra, I saw Shufan. Hi, Shufan. Hi, dear. <laughs> in it, all the way from Germany. In any event, it is not the enlightenment of the Lotus, if it is not the enlightenment of the Lotus Sutra, then it can only be a partial enlightenment and not true enlightenment. Therefore, the immeasurable meaning sutra states, therefore the way living beings gained was not uniform but differed in different cases. It also says, as for those living beings who are unable to hear this sutra, they will in the end fail to, to gain unsurpassed enlightenment. In these passages, the Buddha is saying that the people attained different degrees of enlightenment through the sutras expounded prior to the Lotus Sutra. But in the end, they did not attain the way of supreme enlightenment of the Lotus Sutra itself. Everybody understands? Mm -hmm. yes? yes? Question, answer. Okay, question. Some page uh, 877, second column, right one. Uh, question. Some 2,230 years have now passed since Shakyamuni Buddha passed away. Among all the sutras which 
Sutra is fitted for an age like this and will spread and benefit all living beings. Okay, this is a long question because other sutras have made things that kind of infer as though they might be. So he's going to cover all that. The Great Collection Sutra, let me start again. Okay, because we're basically saying it's the Lotus Sutra, right? That's it. All right, he's saying. Some 2,230 years have now passed since Shakyamuni Buddha passed away. Among all the sutras, which sutra is fitted for an age like this and will spread and benefit all living beings. The Great Collection Sutra speaks of five successive 500-year periods of which our present age corresponds to the fifth period. This fifth of the 500-year periods is described as an age of conflict, when the pure law will become obscured and lost. The Buddha here is saying that at that time, the people's hearts will be contentious and wicked, and they will be overwhelmed with greed and anger. Because of this, strife and warfare alone flourish, and among the Buddhist doctrines, those that had earlier spread widely, such as the pure law of the true word, Zen, and Nimbusa schools, and observers of the precepts, will become obscured and lost. On examining the first, second, third, and fourth of the 500-year periods, we see that although the Great Collection Sutra belongs to the teachings in which the truth had not yet uh, been revealed concerning the way for attaining Buddhahood, the state of affairs in the world did not differ in the slightest from the Buddhist predictions. Considered in this light, his golden words that our present time will be an age of conflict when the pure law will become obscured and lost could not possibly be false. Yet, if that is so, are we to then assume that now in the latter day of the law, none of the Buddhist doctrines are of any efficacy or that none of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas can benefit the people? Are we then to do nothing and pay no homage to any Buddha or Bodhisattva? Are we to practice no teaching whatsoever, to be left with no one at all to turn to? How are we to prepare our minds for the existences that are to come? Everybody understands the question? He's saying, he's again, saying again, okay, if, if, if the pure law is going to be, become obscured and lost, what are we supposed to do now that it's the latter day? Mm -hmm. Answer. Now, the latter day of the law is the time when only the seven characters of nam myoho renge -kyo, not the sutras, nam myoho renge -kyo, which is the heart of the 28 chapters of the Lotus Sutra that Shakyamuni, who achieved enlightenment in the remote past, Bodhisattva superior practices, Bodhisattva boundless practices, and the others must spread, will spread throughout this country, and there will be advantage and benefit for all people. There we go. I see Kosen Rufu here. And the blessings of Bodhisattva superior practices will flourish. Wow, what did he just say? Did you catch that? Mm -hmm. What did he just say? That I'm, what am I referring to? What did I just say? What did he just say that I think is so significant? He's saying, again, what was the question? The question is, what are we supposed to do now that it's the latter day of the law and everything, including the Lotus Sutra, has lost its power, right? Mm -hmm. It's the fifth 500-year period. And Nichiren says, now listen to what he says. Who is Nichiren actualized as? What's his function? That same as... Bodhisattva superior practices. Mm -hmm. So now, what does he say here? Does he say the blessings of Shakyamuni? No. no. What does he say? Now, let me read it again. Don't let this get by you. This is this is deep because he's saying me without saying me. Okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. get it. Now the latter day of the law. Now the latter day of the law is the time mm -hmm. when only the seven characters of Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, he's the Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, thus come one, yes. which is the heart of the 28 chapters of the Lotus Sutra, the Shakyamuni Buddha, who achieved enlightenment in the remote past, Bodhisattva superior practices, Bodhisattva boundless practice, and others must spread, will spread throughout this country, and there will be advantage and benefit for all people and the blessings of bodhisattva superior practices will flourish. This will happen because it is clearly stated in the sutra. Those who are firm in their aspiration for the way and sincere in their resolve should inquire about this matter in detail. The people of the Pure Land School claim in the 10,000 years of the latter day of the law, 
All other sutras will perish. Only this one teaching of Amida will remain. They also say this latter day of the law we now face is an evil age stained by the five impurities. Only this doctrine of the pure lands uh, offers a road by which one can gain admittance. Though they falsely attribute these statements to the great collection sutra, no such passages appear in that sutra. Moreover, there is no reason why they should. It is logically apparent that while he was in the world, the Buddha would have no reason for declaring that in the present, the latter day of the law, an evil age stained by the five impurities, only the Pure Land teaching would offer a path to rebirth in the Pure Land, a Buddha Land. Their basic sutra states, in the age to come, the scriptural path will perish. I, Shakyamuni, leave this uh, one sutra which shall endure a hundred years. But nowhere does it state that those hundred years fall within the 10,000 years of the latter day of the law. Moreover, if we examine the Universal and Impartial Enlightenment Sutra and the larger Amida Sutra, it appears that the hundred year period referred to represents the hundred years that follow the first millennium after the Buddha's passing. But people all regard Shantao's mistaken interpretation as quite reasonable. Though, in fact, they are all biased in their thinking, because that's not what the sutra says. Percep Shantao interpreted it as that. Perceptive people should consider the matter in light of everyday reason. In a time of severe drought, it is, is it the great ocean that dries up first? Or is it the little streams? The Buddha himself explained this, likening the Lotus Sutra to the great ocean, and the Meditation Sutra, Amida Sutra, and similar texts to little streams. Therefore, the pure land of the little streams that are the Nimbutsu and similar teachings will surely disappear first, as the Sutra passage states. When the Great Collection Sutra says that in the fifth 500-year period, the pure law will become obscured and lost, and when the two-volume Sutra says that the scriptural path will perish, they are simply stating the same thing. Therefore, we are to understand that from the very beginning of the latter day of the law, the scriptural path that includes the two-volume sutra and sutras of, the type, of that type will perish. The scriptural path will perish means that the sutras will lose their power to benefit living beings. It does not mean that the actual scrolls of the sutras will cease to exist. At present, more than 200 years have passed since the time began when the scriptural path is to perish. In this period, the Lotus Sutra alone can benefit people and lead them to enlightenment. This being the case, it becomes obvious that one ought to embrace this sutra and chant nam myoho renge -kyo. In the Medicine King chapter, the Buddha states, In the last 500-year period, you must spread it wide, abroad widely throughout Jampadvipa and never allow it to be cut off. The great teacher Chintai comments on this by saying, In the last 500-year period, the mystic way will spread and benefit humankind far into the future. And the great teacher Miolo further states, it is the time when the great teaching will be propagated. All these passages indicate that during the last 500 year period, the Lotus Sutra will be propagated and thereafter will continue to exist throughout Jampadvipa and never disappear. The Peaceful Practices chapter refers to those who, in the latter age hereafter, when the law is about to perish, should accept and embrace, read and recite this sutra. Okay, and the Peaceful Practices chapter is the chapter of the Lotus Sutra, right? Mm -hmm. And the Supernatural Powers chapter of Lotus Sutra says, At that time the Buddha spoke to superior practices and the others and in the Great Assembly of Bodhisattvas, saying, if in the process of entrusting this sutra to others, I were to employ these supernatural powers for immeasurable, boundless, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, millions of, as of asamya kalpas to describe the benefits of the sutra, I could never finish doing so. To put it briefly, all the doctrines possessed by the thus come one, all the freely exercised supernatural powers of the thus come one, the storehouse of all the secret essentials of the thus come one, all the most profound matters of the thus come one. All these are proclaimed, revealed, and clearly expounded in this sutra. The meaning of these various passages is that whether one speaks of it as, as, 
of it as the fifth 500 year period following Shakyamuni Buddha's passing or calls it the future age or the defiled and evil age, it is apparent that at the present time when the 2000 years of the former and middle days of the law have ended and we are more than 200 years into the latter day, only the Lotus Sutra should be propagated. The reason for this is that in this age, the people's minds have become twisted and the teachings produce no actual effect. So why does he say it's bad? Because you're not going to get anything out of it. And by doing so, you're actually slandering. So if you're slandering and not going to get anything out of it, don't do it. Mm. The Buddhas and gods no longer manifest their awesome powers to answer prayers based on those teachings. And prayers for this life and for future existences go unanswered. At such a time, the heavenly devil, or Papias, will take advantage of the situation and come rampaging and the nation and will be troubled by constant famine and drought. Disease and plague will rage everywhere and we will suffer the disasters of foreign invasion and internal strife. Our nation being constantly at war within and later assaulted by invading warriors from another country. In such an age of conflict, when the pure law of the other sutras ceases to be effective, the wonderfully effective eff eff efficacious mm -hmm. medicine of the Lotus Sutra will provide the cure for all these grave disasters. If one uses the Lotus Sutra to pray for the welfare of the land, it will prove to be of great it will prove to be a great pure law that will secure and protect the nation, ensuring joy and prosperity to everyone from the ruler on down to the common people. King Ajashatru and King Ashoka uh, started out as evil rulers. But the former heeded the counsel of his high minister, Javika, and became, and while the latter put faith in the uh, guidance of the venerable Yasha. And as a result, each left behind a reputation as a worthy ruler. Likewise, the emperor of the Qin dynasty in China, who cast aside the three schools of the south and seven schools of the north and relied on the Dharma teacher Qi Yi, the, uh, which is Tentai, and Emperor Kamu of Japan, who spurned the eminent priests of the six schools and instead heeded the Dharma teacher Saicho, which is Dingyo, are known to this day as worthy rulers. Chi Yi is the man who was later honored with the title of the great teacher Tentai, while Saicho later became known as the great teacher Dingyo. The present ruler of Japan is in a position to do the same. If he will put his faith in this great pure law, which he's talking about then, when he says great pure law, then he's talking about nam myoho mm -hmm. which assures its believers of peace and security in their present existence and good circumstances and future existences and propagate it throughout the nation, then he will be looked up to by the people of all the provinces and his name will be handed down in later ages as that of a worthy man. Indeed, he may come to be regarded as a, mag as a manifestation of bodhisattva boundless practices. And the wise man who works to propagate the five characters of the mystic law, no matter how lowly his station, should be looked upon as a manifestation of bodhisattva superior practices or perhaps as an envoy of Shakyamuni thus come one. He's talking about himself there. Mm -hmm. Okay? The bodhisattva medicine king, medicine superior, perceiver of the world's sounds and great power, on the other hand, were envoys of the Buddha during the 2,000 years of the former and middle days of the law. Because their turn had us already passed, they can no longer benefit people as they did in those ancient times. Just observe what happens when prayers are offered to them at present. All such prayers go unanswered. Now in the latter day of the law it is the turn of bodhisattva superior practices, boundless practices, and the others. Only when one understands all this clearly and believes, it, uh, believes in it can the law manifest its power and the Buddhas and bodhisatt bodhisattvas bring benefit to the people. Only when under one understands all this clearly, has faith in what I'm saying, and believes in it, can the law manifest its power and the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas bring benefit to the people? Yes. You get benefits. To illustrate, in kindling a fire, three things are needed. A good piece of steel, a good flint, and a good tinder. The same is true of prayer. Three things are required. A good teacher, a good believer, and a good teaching. Before prayers can be effective and disasters banished from the land. A good teacher is a priest who is free from any fault in secular affairs. 
who never fawns upon others, even in the slightest, who desires and is satisfied with little, and who is compassionate, a priest who reads and upholds the Lotus Sutra precisely as it teaches, and also encourages and leads others to embrace it. Such a priest the Buddha has praised among all priests as the finest teacher of the law. He's talking about himself. Mm -hmm. A good believer is one who does not depend upon persons of eminence or despise those of humble station, like him as the teacher, who does not rely on the backing of superiors or look down on inferiors, who, not relying upon the opinions of others, upholds the Lotus Sutra among all the sutras. Such a person the Buddha has called the best of all people. As for a good teaching, the Buddha has told us that the sutra, the lotus, represents the foremost among all doctrines. Among all the sutras the Buddha has preached, among those he now preaches, and among those he will preach, this sutra is designated as foremost, and therefore it is a good teaching. The scriptural doctrines of the Zen, True Word, and other schools stand in second or third place by comparison. And indeed, the doctrines of the True Word school in particular deserve to be put in seventh place. And yet in Japan, those second-rate, third-rate, or even seventh-rate doctrines are used as the prayer basis for prayers, uh, though any proof of their efficacy has yet to be seen. This wonderful law, which is foremost and unexcelled, should in fact be the basis of prayers. So we say, nam myoho renge should be the basis of all prayers in the latter-day law. The Buddha himself has declared that honestly discarding expedient means I will preach only the unsurpassed way, and that the Buddhas will appear in this world, that's us, solely for this one reason, which is true. Who then could have doubts on the matter? And I'll stop there until next week. We'll start on page 881 in the middle of that question there on that column one. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh,